right, look, look at this. This is freaking awesome, man. Here we go, woo! Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to get started on the first part of several parts of our assembly director systems. That, that's the first item in the upper right-hand corner, the 4,000 that we need for the space elevator. Uh, so I've spent many, many hours uh, designing and testing, building and testing, uh, the first part of that factory, which is going to make automated wiring for us. Um, and so uh, I have uh, the parts that we're going to need for, for that in sitting in these bins, just waiting for us to build them. And this whole section out here that is painted in orange is going to be where we're going to build that. And that's just to make the automated wiring, uh, which is just one of several parts that we need to ultimately make those assembly director systems. There's uh, a few things that we need to do. Um, to get ready for that and I also want to show you some things that I've done too so let's go do that first um, and actually the very first thing is I want to we need to get mark three miners so we need to get those milestones done and so let's take a look at that and uh, I'll explain why I need them right now uh, so we need leading edge production to get that but in order to do this we're gonna need 50 of these fused modular frames. I already have several supercomputers, excuse me, that I made up just from our storage and it's just, they're, you know, they're just kind of sitting waiting for me to use them. But we have to know these uh, fused modular frames first, which we do from advanced aluminum production. Uh, so I have all of this stuff, but we need 50 radio control units, uh, which I'm just going to make by hand. So I have a total of 18, so we just need to make another 32 of those. Um, I don't think I can make those in oh I can make those in here okay so yeah let me let me whip up another uh, 32 of these so we have 50 of those I'll gather up the other stuff and then we'll we'll do this advanced aluminum production milestone be back in a moment okay we should have everything for advanced aluminum production here we go milestone reached the object scanner can now find underground wells which can be pressurized to extract resources such as nitrogen, water, and oil. Nitrogen will contribute to more advanced aluminum parts. All right. Nitrogen. We'll have to be checking that out at some point. Okay, so when that comes back, um, we then need leading edge production. And... Um, the pipes and the supercomputers are are easy peasy. Uh, these fused modular frames, however, oh, what's it going to take? How many of those do I need? I need I need fifty. Okay. So we can't apparently make those in here. Um. Or yeah. I mean, I should. We should have unlocked those, right? Opening codex. Oh, we have to make those in a blender. Oh, shit. Um, with nitrogen gas. Okay, that's going to be a showstopper. Yeah. Okay, that's not something we can do in the, we're going to be able to do in this episode. There's no way. So, I will work on getting prepared for that in a later episode. Unless... Okay, hold on. Let's just see... 
Where is that? Where would that be? Nitrogen gas. Do we have anything really close by? Let's just take a look. Maybe we do. I mean, I've never really paid attention to that. Let's see if anything at all shows up close by. Okay. That's not actually that far. Impure, normal, pure. Hmm. I wonder what that's supposed to, to mean. So... Whoops. If we package nitrogen gas, what what do we use to get nitrogen gas? It's produced in a pack. It can be used in a, da, 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 da. Oh, right. We need to use the gas wells. Okay. Um... Didn't they call that a pressure well? Yeah, resource well pressurizer. This can be placed on a resource well to activate it by pressurizing the underground resource. Once activated, the resource well extractors can be placed on the surrounding subnodes to extract the resource. All right, we can certainly make that. Um, oh, what's it take to make well extractors? Oh, that's easy. So where do you where do you s store the nitrogen? Do you store it just like in buffers, in fluid buffers? Hmm. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm I'm not I guess I'm not sure. We don't absolutely have to have that to get started though. We'll just be short a little bit on Caterium. Um, I will make it a priority to get it done, but I, I, I don't want that to hold up the rest of what we need to get started on. So um, I'll work on that and maybe, I don't know, in the next episode or two, we'll go after that nitrogen gas and put that stuff down. Okay, anyway, let's go over here and I want to show you a couple things that have happened that I did off camera because uh, we have so, so much to do that, you know, some of these kind of side things like getting resources ready and stuff, I wanted to, I, I just decided to do that off camera and show you the end result rather than, you know, do the actual building just because here again, we just don't have a lot of time left. And what I mean by that is, you know, 1.0 is coming out in a, just a little more than a month. And I'm, I'm pretty sure we're not going to be able to get to the very end of this game before then. Um, and that's okay. You know, it is what it is. But, uh, you know, we'll, so we'll just keep going as normal and we'll get as far as we get. And then that's as far as we get. So let's take a look at this. Um, I haven't shown you guys this for a very long time. Um, but this originally was just one platform with six uh, refiners here making Caterium ingots. But uh, after doing my calculations for the automated wiring setup, we're going to need a total of... 180 Caterium ingots, and we're already consuming 36 for a couple of other things. We're using a little bit of our computer factory and a little bit in the steel factory. So that means we need a total of 216 ingots to, you know, to support everything that we're doing. Uh, I'm utilizing the Caterium wire recipe because it's just so damn good. You know, 120 wire per minute. Um, so that's why, you know, I'm using so much Caterium for this build. Now, I've already set the machines up to produce 216 ingots, but unfortunately, I don't quite have enough, um, uh, I can't get quite enough ore out of this setup. So my my thought was, I had, yeah, as you can see, I have a, a completely overclocked to the max, and it's producing 600 parts per minute, but what we actually need is, um, I think we need like 648 in total and so if you know it, so my my option is either to change that to a mark 3 miner or there is a caterium node way over there by the waterfall that we could also potentially tap into but we're only missing a, a little bit 
and I don't think it's going to be an issue for us to get started and, and then you know at just add the rest of the Caterium later because it's just not something I really want to work on right at the moment I want to get moving forward with these other things but uh, if you're curious the way this is basically set up is that each one of these guys is producing 15 Caterium ingots per minute we have a total of nine that are at, at the normal rate I'm gonna move away from this because it's so loud these guys are all jammed up too, by the way, because nothing's happening. Everything's just sitting on the belt at the moment. Uh, well, 36 of it's being used, but not very much. Okay, so we have nine um, at 45. No, sorry, at 15. So if we go uh, nine times 15, that gives us 135, okay? And then I have three, uh, the three red machines over on the left there those are all overclocked and they're all producing a total of 27 each so they're 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 producing 27 caterium each and so 27 times 3 is 81 so if we add um, 81 to this figure that brings us up to 216 which is exactly what we need but we're short because of the fact that, um, well, let's just see how much we're short. So each one of the normal machines is taking in 45 Caterium. Uh, so let's just change this to nine times 45. Um, and then these guys require 81 Caterium each. So that's 243. So if we add 243 to this, that comes out to 648. So yeah, we're 48 or short of the complete, you know, the total criterion that we need to support everything from here. So again, I'll either fix that by making that a Mark III miner or tapping into the other criterion node, which is just uh, south of us over by the waterfall. Um, I don't remember if that's a normal or a pure node, not that it matters, we can still make it work for us. Let's just do a quick sand scan to see that. Okay, so uh, that that's basically the criterium. I've already got it all set up and sending. Uh, that is a pure note. Okay, so yeah, that is another option for us. Um, I'd rather just put a Mark III miner on that. It'll be much much easier, but we'll see. So I've got the criterium all set up um, and running uh, on a belt underneath the platform over there. And I also did a, a, a couple changes with some iron. We still have plenty of iron in this immediate vicinity. In other words, we don't need to use a train or to truck it in. Um, I basically had 22, I think, iron ore coming off of that line over there. Feeding, I think it was feeding something in the computer factory or something like that. Um, so what I did was I took that 22 off of that line. So that line is completely available. It's 270 ore per minute, not, not being used at all. And added the 22 to this line and then, you know, reworked all the logistics over there. And I just had to overclock this machine a little higher to support that. So now it's doing 292 instead of 270. And I also up, had to upgrade the belts to Mark IV to, you know, to support that rate. So what that means for us is that this line here is completely available and it's 270 without any overclocking or, you know, upgrading the miners uh, for our factory. So we're going to utilize all of that because we might as well, right? It's right here. Um, and then if we need more iron after that, which we probably will, we'll have to figure that out when the time comes. The third resource that we're going to need for this build is coal. I don't have enough coal available on what's coming into the factory. In fact, I'm using almost all of it. And so that third conveyor line that I've already run underneath the platform um, up towards the center there, we're going to set up a train to do. And I've, and I've already got the basic platform in place. But I wanted to do that on camera with you guys because other than, you know, just that real small uh, railway that we sent, you know, built up to the space elevator we haven't really done anything else with trains so I figured we should do that one on camera okay I think that gets you caught up uh, with where we are so far and so yeah over here is where we're gonna build the automated wiring 
uh, section of the factory. And all of these tiles that are I have colored orange, I'm going to use color coding because this factory is going to be so enormous that I thought color coding would kind of help us, you know, differentiate one area of it from another. So everything we're going to do in this part of the build is going to be orange. And then we'll, you know, we'll use blue, we'll use red, we'll use green, whatever, uh, for some other stuff later. And over here I've got, um, you know, materials ready to go uh, for this build. I have set this build up completely and tested it, and it ran uh, well after I tweaked a couple of things with the blueprints. Um, and then I tore back all back down in order to build on camera. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. I think, though, you know, the more I think about it, I think what I want to do, well, hmm. I'm trying to decide if I want to do the train now and then do the build or do the build first and then the train. If we do the train now, then we'll have the coal and all the resources will be ready to feed into everything when, you know, when we're done building it. So maybe we will work on that. And if we're going to do that, okay, I'm going to need lots of concrete. And we're going to need computers and we're going to need, let's see here. Motors for the station. Yeah, I think I think we probably have enough stuff on us. If we were gonna stay on this save for the long term, I would do I would do this differently than the way that I am gonna do it. But because you know our, t our time is short. I'm going to make this train kind of fun, like a roller coaster, <laughs> um, just for the hell of it, right? So yeah, that's the plan. All right, let's switch over to our hover, uh, our hover pack, so we can kind of get up in the air here a bit. And I wanted to, I wanted to put some por some supports underneath this platform, but I'll do that later. That's an off-camera thing that I can do. Uh, so so basically, I I did some surveying, and over here. In this valley, there are four co normal coal nodes. I've already set up. Yeah, these are normal. I've already set up a couple of miners and a platform over here for the train station. Uh, but we're just going to build the rails and the train station. So again, trying to get some of that stuff done in advance. Underneath this platform here, I have um, these three conveyor lines going up the center. And the plan here is, you know, the... the the center of this platform I've colored black and that's going to be that whole area is going to stay clear for just running conveyor lines you know at, at, up there as they need to go and then this will be the lift that will hook into the train station for the coal so what we need to do is um, I might have to set this down a couple of times to get it right because unfortunately you can't put down like a freight platform or a fluid freight platform until the train station itself is down. But it's the freight platform in particular that I want to line up, you know, with that hole. So let's go ahead and grab the train station. We want it to go that direction. And we also want to make sure that the rail is right in the center of one of these tiles which it is right there. Okay. So I think, I think that's where we want it to go in terms of, oh shit, I'm missing some rods and sheets. Okay, let me go grab that stuff because we may need those. In fact, we probably will need those for some other things too. All right, so I want to put um, a hole down here and just put it right there so we know that that lines up the rail in the center of this tile. In other words, we don't want to go any further to the west with the station. But we might need to adjust it to the north a little bit. So let's just see what happens when we put a freight platform down and see if the holes line up. They do not. These are the outputs. Okay, so we need to come back. Um, let's see here. We need to come back. 
One, two. Yeah, we need to come back two of uh, these. So we want the front of the station to be lined up with that. Okay, let's pull this back down again. Get the train station going that direction. And then we want it lined up right there, I believe. Let me just double check that. Yeah, that looks correct. We'll switch this to a freight platform, flip it around this way, set it down, and that should be what we want. Nice. Okay, um, I, th I think this is going to need to be a Mark III lift. And let's actually go down. Oh, you know what? Here, let's do it this way. This will be easier. Change that to a Mark III. Come down. Uh, yeah, you know what? I might actually just move that floor hole, but we want that to go to there. We'll put this back in here. Turn it this way. Oh, nope. Hold on. That's not what I wanted to do. Set that there. Lock it and nudge it in place. There. Okay. Let's go back down here for a moment, and we'll just hook this Mark III line up here. Uh, we're going to need a total of 135 coal for this, for this build, so that's why we need Mark III. Now let's uh, let's name this station. Um, we'll call it West Coast Coal. I don't think we have enough text for that, so let's just call it uh, WSC. Coal station drop. I want to, you know, I want the. Oh, god damn it! I clicked instead of pressing enter. Some things in this game you click and some you press enter. That's why I was confused. Okay, West Coast coal station. You know what? We don't need to call it a station because we already know that. So can we call it West Coast coal? Drop. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. And uh, close that. Now we want to look in here. We want to set this to unload. Very good. Okay. Let's get some power to the station as well. Uh, the power connector is over on that side. Uh, if I do that, yeah, that's going to kind of clip through, isn't it? Oh, damn it. I'm missing cable. I'm going to go get some cable. For Pete's sake. Can't take me anywhere. Incidentally, um, I believe I will have shown you the new drives, uh, or recipes, rather, that I, I learned off camera. And we should have another one in here. Let's take a look at it. Diluted fuel, alternate turbo fuel. And, yeah, that one sucks. I, I don't really know why I would need these. I mean, it does, I guess it does 60 fuel per minute, but, but here's something that I found out. Uh, I had been complaining all along <laughs> that we couldn't get out of here to go look at the codex. Uh, but actually you can, uh, but it's not obvious. What you have to do is you have to click on package fuel and then you can do open in codex and then it'll actually open it up into the codex so you can look at stuff so the default recipe for this is 40 per minute okay so the other one does 20 per minute more and it uses packaged water and heavy oil residue 
Okay, I mean, that might be a good one, but I just, I don't think we need packaged fuel. This one requires four inputs to make 45. Um, what is the default recipe? The default recipe, oh, I actually already have this recipe that makes 30 per minute. It just uses compacted coal and heavy oil residue. So that's 30 per minute. This one would be 45 per minute, but it adds two more inputs. Not only do we need heavy residue and petroleum coke, but we need sulfur and normal fuel on top of that just to make 50% more. So I don't think that's a good deal compared to what we already have. And then my silica circuit boards are far, far better than this. So all of these suck. We're going to re-roll them. Yeah, so that, that was kind of cool that I discovered that you can get into the codex without losing, you know, the current recipes. So I wanted to show you that too. Okay, let's get back over here. All right, so I have already uh, tested out this route and it's going to be kind of a fun roller coaster type of track that we're going to do. Uh, one thing that I've noticed about these tracks, though, is that it's really kind of challenging to, to lay them down smoothly. They just do some weird shit, uh, as you'll see as we go along here. Um, I want to take this out as far as it'll go. I'm going to lose... Well, actually, if I stay close to those lights, I shouldn't lose power. Okay, let's put that, connect that to there. Kind of stay a little further on this side. Once we lay the rail down, though, then we can get power from it. Okay. So let's do another section here. I'm probably not going to I'm probably not going to leave this concrete here either. We'll probably remove it and just put some supports down. But I'm I don't know why am I not getting power from this rail? Oh, because I didn't tr hook the train station up. I'm glad I noticed that now until we got 50 miles away. I needed to get cable. All right, I don't like the idea of running the cable across to here because it's it's going to clip into there. So why don't we why don't we do this? Let's let's remove that. Let's connect a line to you. And go down underneath. Oh, geez, I can't tell. Let me, let's remove that. Okay. The problem here is that... All right, I've got an idea. Let's do, let's do this. Put that back. I want it to be straight, right? So, so let's bring that straight down here, and we need to nudge it to there and to there. Okay, that's that's good. That's only temporary, though. That's not going to stay there. This is still going to be kind of a bitch, though, isn't it? Okay, here, let's do this. Let's put this here. Can I... Yeah. And we just need to put the socket right in the center of that on the east side, the electrical outlet. I 
I think, yeah, I think it needs to go there. Okay. Now we can remove this and this. Is that, is that right though? No, I think I nudged it over to the left too much. It looks... It could maybe even nudge a half a nudge to the west and a nudge to the south, I'm thinking. Or maybe even a half a nudge. Okay, so... Put you there. Let's do a half a nudge that way. And a half a nudge that way. Let's try that and see if that looks correct. It may not. We'll see. Yeah. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, we'll go with that. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to get a a double outlet. All oh, right, we can't put those. We can't do it that way. Um, well, we just need to remember it's right in the center uh, or right in the corner of those four. We could even temporarily remove this to make it even easier. Okay, so put that... No, you son of a bitch. Moved right as I pressed the mouse button. Okay. Now let's just stay on this seam all the way down. Uh, to here. And then do a half nudge that way. Oh. Wait a second. It's not half nudging for me. That's a full nudge. Okay, well, I mean... We'll just have to go there then. We won't be able to see it anyway. I still like to make things nice and neat, even if you can't see it, but sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Okay, that's much nicer than running a line across there and having it clip into shit. Beautiful. Okay, now we should have power on our rail, which we do because we can see the lines and we can... Excuse me, continue to hover. far this way can I go? Right to about there-ish. Okay, let's bring that down further and bring this down. I don't think we're going to actually want to go this far, but we'll run it temporarily just so I can kind of hover over here and take a look-see. Well, maybe we will actually want to bring it this far because we want to start to curve it around to go down there. All right, let's do this. Let's bring this out a little further. And we're going to just come down here. Um, I believe I want to... If we aim it this way... Okay, if we, if we use this one, we could probably just hit the edge of that waterfall there before we shoot back up the other side. 
So I think this is where we want to head that direction. However, so let's remove all of that. Um, let's get back up in the air. What I'm going to do here, I've got another research thingy. We're going to grab this double ramp. And we're going to run that down a ways. Now, the thing, the thing I've noticed about, again, the, running these rails is you have to kind of run foundations like this to help guide it along. But once you have the rail in place, then the idea is you remove the foundations. Uh, except for, you know, supports along the way. Um, Alright, so... I can't tell for sure if that's correct. It's got to be straight. See, yeah, it's not quite straight. I guess I can still hover here. So, I think what that means is we want to... We probably want to end the rail there to get it to curve correctly. Let's bring it around to here. We just have to get it far enough to where it's straight and in the center, which I think is right there. I, I can't hover enough to, to tell. Let me see. Now, nah, I think it needs to... Go back another. Yeah. yeah. I think that's right. I think that's lined up right on the seam there. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So, what we're going to do here before we proceed... is I think I'm going to let's get um actually here no let's go to this yeah let's go to this toolbar here and I'm gonna put this support right in the center and bring that down that is centered right I think so Okay, and then um, why don't we use four meter foundations? I could blueprint these, but the thing is, is that they're going to be at different heights at different places along the, the line. So... And, and, you know, it's not difficult to do that anyway. So, okay. And then what we'll do here is we'll just remove these. And I'll need to, I'll need to kind of figure out the spacing on the other supports too. I suppose what we could do is base it upon the length of each rail. Yeah, so, okay. Where does that end? Bring that to there. And then we'll get that right in the center and bring that down.
to there. And again, we'll use a, a four meter. Okay. Yeah, that, I think that looks good. We'll probably only need to do one more. Yeah, because then, then it gets to the train station, which again, I'll put supports underneath that too. Uh, let's, let's get rid of those two and these here. Hold on. There. And we'll cut those all the way back to the platform. Whoops. Okay. I think that looks pretty nice. It's basic, it's simple. And it just, you know, it removes the the bulky looking foundations from the rail. Unfortunately, though, it's not going to be nice and smooth and sleek. Um, all the way down because it gets weird when you start, um, you know, when you start doing angles and inclines and stuff. Okay, let's let's run this down as far down as it'll go, and then I'm gonna also do another support right here on the edge of the waterfall. And to do that, we're going to remove this. We're going to grab the two meter ramp, put that in place, and then a two meter, yeah, a two meter thingy there. That's right. Put that there. Grab a four meter here and put it in place. And I'm going to also scooch one underneath there too. Good. I think that's workable. All right, now Let's get rid of all of this and all of this. Looking pretty good. When we get down to here, I think we want to be just over the top of that. Well, we could like go almost all the way down to the water, I suppose. Let's try it and see how I feel about it. Yeah, that's probably as far down as we need to go. All right, now we'll bring that all the way out to there. And we might. We might run into a bit of a problem over here as we're we're out a little too far over the waterfall to do a support unless we geez unless we do one way the hell down there 
Uh. Hmm. Now I'm starting to think maybe I should have hold, held that over another foundation. Unless, well, no, you know what we'll do? We'll run it straight to here and then we'll start to curve it. Yeah, let's just do it that way. Because once we get up the other side, then it's going to be curvy as hell. Anyway. Okay, so. The way this is going to work is... We're going to run this as far that way as we can go. And when we get, when this flattens out, or actually, no, probably, I'll take that back. Probably right about here, we should do another support. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so let's take this piece out. Uh, no, wrong one. We need the two meter. Yeah. I wish it, yeah, I wish it wouldn't do that. It's a pain in the ass. Okay, run that down to there. Snap that in place, lock it, and then nudge it. Good. Okay, so everything from here all the way back to the top support can go away now. So that'll be you two as well. I wonder if... No, never mind. Well, actually, hold on. Would it look better if we... didn't have that um, other piece on and we just did it like this? Didn't I put two down there? Oh, maybe that was the second one. Yeah, I like that better, actually. It's less bulky. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. This is going to be a cool train ride, you guys. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Okay, so let's remove all of this stuff. And put you in uh, there and down. Okay, that looks great. All right, now I think what we'll do here is remove all of that and we'll put another support kind of right at the edge of this waterfall where the well I want to put it where the track really kind of flattens out again which is it's still at a little bit of an angle right at the edge here so let's go maybe to here We'll say right. Whoop. Uh, we'll say right here. Mm, um, it's really snapping up high. Okay. Well, whatever. If that's where it wants to go. That's where it'll go. Okay. And then you guys, and I'll go away here. Okay, let's leave the rest of that in place for the moment. Only 
to get a little bit further out this way. Don't look down. Oh, there's a purple slug down there. Let's just keep going that way a little further. What we're going to do now, now things are going to get a little trickier because we want to aim for that location. But I also want a support like right about there as the track starts to curve. So let's not worry about the support yet. Let's get the curve taken care of first. So what I think we'll do is we'll come over here and we will, let's grab this, let's hold control and start to angle it maybe to there. Yeah, I think that's what we want to do. Okay, let's grab the four meter ramp. Hmm. Kind of wanted to go between those two trees, actually. So, we could probably just do this. I'm trying to decide if I want to, if we should do the steeper ramp. I think we should. Hmm, I don't know though. That's pretty fucking steep. Nah, we don't want to do that. Let's go back to, let's go back to the four meter. Oh, wait a second. I must not have been using the, I must have been using the two meter. Okay. See, that's just about right if we wanted to hit the tip of that, but we don't. We want it to be up above the ground a little more than that. So maybe go one, two, three, let's go four more. We'll try that and see what happens. Okay, so now, see this part's going to get a little bit tricky. Well, maybe not. Let's... I think we do need this to be... over there. Let's try, let's try it right there. That's not terrible. Sometimes there's a very noticeable hump, you know, when you make those connections, but yeah, that's not terrible. Okay. Uh, all right. 
now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and run it up to, say, about there. And let's jump off here for a minute and put this on. See, we still, we still have to go all the way up that hill, too. So... But I don't want to... I don't think I want to keep this angle because otherwise it's going to get too high in the air. So maybe what we do here is we go to... That's what we're on. Go to the uh, two meter. And take it to maybe there-ish. Okay, let's just get the track. Uh, no, we need to go a little further. Okay, can I... I can't rotate that. So what we're going to need to do is get you... And then, all right, it's not, it's not letting, it's, it's only letting me do quarter or 45 turns. Can I put you there? Okay, there we go. That's what I wanted. Okay. So we'll kind of turn it this way. And actually, maybe I'll keep both of those. Where's um, Yeah, we're starting to get kind of close to the ground again. Let's just get the track up this far and see what it looks like. curve more than that. Are we just... Yeah, we must just be getting to the maximum length of it. Let's try that curve. All right, I'm going to remove this stuff. And I think we want this to be... Let's get up a little higher here. Probably right to about there. Question is, is that... Because that's almost... Perfect. At least until we get to that boulder up there. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Now, we're going to have to get steeper, though, because we're getting too close to the ground at this point. So I think what we do is maybe, mm, yeah, probably starting here. Let's go back to the four meter ramps. Oh, whoops, wrong way. We 
just want to keep it. You know what? Let's go even a little further. I'm starting to get pretty high here, too. here. Let's get this. Any bads up here? Oh, I, I killed a bad over there when I was up here earlier. Testing all this out. What's up here? Somewhere around here there's a hard drive too. Oh, it's right there. Yeah, let's uh, let's nab this. I didn't want to do that off camera, so I figured I'd wait for you guys. I must have killed the bad bad that was up here, too. That was weird. The handle didn't go down. Okay. Another hard drive. Speaking of which... Ah, uh, what the hell. Let's pick up these circuit boards. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. Oh, I'm missing reinforced iron plates. Any on the ground? We've got some cable or some uh, wire. Don't see any reinforced plates. Okay, well, we'll worry about that later. Alright, so let's just bring this straight on up the middle here. I guess what we could do is go right up over the top of that boulder. Um, so I'm thinking probably one more... Eh... Let's go, let's go two more. Okay. And then we'll, uh, oh shit. No, we need to go higher than that, don't we? Um, I want to check something else out too. Let's go over this way. We want to come through here. I want to give us a, a marker to aim towards. Because we're going down into that valley right there. And there's my platform that I built. But what we're actually aiming for is this little pathway here because we're going to run the rail. Follow the contour of this path more or less down into the valley. So let's get a pillar. And we're just going to zoop that way up into the sky so we have a marker to aim for. Because we can't see, see it from here with all the trees and stuff in the way. Where are we at? We're over here. Okay, so we're almost headed right for that pillar, at least on this side. So what we'll do is let's put this in place. And maybe encourage the track to nudge to the right a little bit. Thing is, though, is we're getting kind of close to the ground again here. I'm almost thinking we need to 
continue the ramp up a little, a little more. I just don't want the track to get like super high in the air. I want it to stay, you know, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 meters off the ground ish. But I think we need to go a little higher. And maybe even to there. Okay, now let's flatten things out. Yeah, that's probably that's okay. I think that works. All right, let's bring the track up as far that way as it'll go. And we're going to run out of power. I can I hook a a power line to the rail? I don't think I can. Maybe I can. Yeah, no, it won't let me do it. Okay. Well, then let's just see if we can run it from up here. Why don't I also put the rail, let's see, what do I not use very often? We'll put the rail in nine for now on this toolbar. There we go. Okay. So we want it to come, kind of start coming this direction. Okay, I think we can work with this. Now, let's look at the ground again. Does it get any higher? It gets a little bit higher. But we might be able to make this work. Okay, now here I'm just going to go with this single foundation. We're probably going to get pretty close to the ground here, but I I might just let that uh, let that slide a little bit. We are going to have to get over even further though, too. Let's just take it to here. Unfortunately, this tree is going to have to go. I don't want to cut a ton of trees because that's part of the beauty of the landscape and the scenery and stuff. But oh shit, auto save. But unfortunately, these guys are going to have to go. Uh, where's the rail? We might be able to let that little tree stay there. We'll see. Okay, so we just want to kind of gradually move uh, towards the pillar without making it too drastic of a change. Maybe to there.
All right. Now we need to definitely need to avoid this boulder. And we also need to start moving over further as well. And then we'll adjust the trees as needed. I almost think we should even pull this rail over more than we did. So let's redo th this section here. The goal here is just to keep it as smooth as possible because it, it can get a little finicky. Let's try that. If you make, you know, too drastic of a of a change. And I'm no expert in this, by the way. I'm just... I'm pretty new to all this myself, but this is just from all the testing and stuff that I've done so far. That looks like a pretty good aim there. But you see how it's already kind of got this little swerve in it? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can really avoid that, really. If we if we don't cut it quite so harshly to the right, so I had it more kind of like this way. Let's do it more like right here. That's a little better. Yeah, it's not quite as noticeable. Again, just nice and gradually over that way. Um, we're going to need to extend this out a little further. This is taking taking a lot longer than I anticipated, but it's the way things go sometimes, I guess. All right. We're going to have to be a little more curvy with this one because we got to start aiming for that pillar. And this is going to have to go. Cut it out. That doesn't look too bad. It works. All right, so let me see here. Those trees there will definitely have to go, and probably this one here, too. close to the ground here, but I think we're just going to run with it because it's just kind of the way it worked out. I'd rather be closer to the ground and have a nice smooth track than the other way around. Okay. Now, we have to get to the right of this boulder. And then when we get here, we'll have to start ramping down. Um, in fact, we should probably start working on that right now. So let's get the four meter ramp. Which 
which does a pretty good job of following the contour of this pathway, at least for the first part of it. Grab the slug. And this is, well, does that have to go? Well, the little trees are going to have to go, and unfortunately, the big tree is probably going to go with them. Yeah, that's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. Not likely we're going to be able to save that tree either, but let's just see what happens. Okay, so, um... track's going to be too long no matter what. So I think what we should do is just get it right up against that rock there. Like that. Okay. Now, we're going to have to start doing some some curving around here. Is there any way we could save that tree? Let's let's hold off unless we absolutely have no other choice. Oh well, never mind. God damn it, I hate that. I mean, it's nice that you get a bunch of resources, but it means you can't fine tune cutting anything. Jesus. Okay, I was like fucking ten meters away from that tree too. Well, maybe not ten meters, but it is what it is. Can't do anything about it now. Um, all right, so let's let's go one more here, and then we need to start moving in that direction. So let's get one of these. Maybe put that there. Might even want to do that. Whoa. All right, and then down a little more this way. Then we're going to have a pretty sharp corner going this direction. Go with that. Set that to vertical, go down two. Uh no, not vertical. Default. 
Uh, right there. Okay, here, I think we're going to want to go with the shallower ramps, the two meters. Jeez, I'm out of concrete. Okay. Well, we can go back and pick up all of these foundations. I'll do that off camera to get some of that concrete back. Let's get the rail down to here and see what, what happens. something. I want to kind of keep it on that line. But we got to move it more this way though because it's got to curve pretty significantly. So let's go with that. Okay. Um, doesn't want, how are we doing on power? We can come this far. And I need to move it maybe to, let's try there. Kind of. Kind of like it to be more over this way, though. Yeah, I don't like that. Let's redo it. some power shit I should have just ran some power lines out here um yeah so let's let's try that and then start wrapping it around here because again I wanted to kind of follow the path here Maybe to there. See, now it's starting to kind of look a little wonka doodle there because we're forcing it to do other things, but I think that's just the way it's going to have to be. far yeah see how it's kind of got that little dip there that sucks but oh well all right so we're gonna have to we're not quite able to get to the platform yet oh right I needed more concrete I'm going to cut the camera here and go back all the way back and pick up all of this concrete and put down those supports probably at each, you know, uh, track connection. So like here and down there and 
I'll meet you guys uh, back down there by the platform to finish out that last part. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, we're almost uh, finished picking up all the uh, foundations. Uh, but I wanted to show you how I'm doing these pillars because it's working out a little bit differently than it did the first time I showed it to you. Uh, so what I've been doing, because the ground and, and, you know, where the foundation, the base foundation kind of fits, it hasn't uh, always worked out to where the, you know, the pad on top, this one right here, is flush with the rail. So what I've been doing is, wherever we have a section here, I've been attaching this right in about the center of the seam and just bringing it down to the ground. And then removing the top pillar, putting this on top here and making sure that it's centered, it should be. And I'm in vertical mode and then I just bring this up like so and it comes up nice and flush to the bottom of the rail without clipping through it. And then I just pick these back up and reset them like so. And then put the this guy down on the bottom. Let's get it. Well, okay, yeah, I want it to snap in and then we'll just slide it that way. It's just a little bit showing, so let's put another one underneath. There we go. That would actually probably look better if it was a two meter. Because it's just sticking up higher than it needs to, I think. Oh, what the hell just happened? Here, pick that back up. Go with a two meter. And vertical it down and then take this one back off. There. That looks okay. So anyway, I just wanted to show you how I was doing that. Um, I was able to get the the angled pieces to fit pretty nice and neatly too. I'll show you those. Because the grade was a little steeper at this point, uh, I used the 2 meter instead of the 1 meter ramp and it fit almost perfectly there. Got a little bit of a, a hump there I noticed. But, oh shit, I didn't get this one slid over. Okay, so for this what we'll do is we'll put you there and slide you over this way. This was the other way I was doing it. And it was working fine until I got up there and then it all of a sudden wasn't lining up correctly. Get the one meter ramp here. There we go. And then remove those. That looks pretty good. Since I'm back down here, let me just kind of double check all of these. There's a little bit of clipping going on here, but I think it's... We... Mm, we might be able to make that a little bit better. What if we remove that? See, the thing is, is this isn't really attaching to the... the rail there though uh, I mean to the support thingy it's attaching to the ground unfortunately um, so I can't I can't line it up quite perfectly so I think we're gonna just leave that one Unless we, okay, maybe if we slid this over a little bit. So let's slide it up this way a little further. Mm, I don't know if 
Well, yeah, let's try it. I can do this if I can get the this to attach to the one down below, but see, it's, it wants to attach to the terrain is the problem. Um, and I can't, I can't get it to pivot straight either. Let's just try this. You know, we might be able to get that. It's not perfectly lined up. What would a two meter ramp look like? Yeah, see, it doesn't quite touch the... Yeah, that's a pain in the ass, man. What if we put that there? Nudged it. Oh, yeah, this might actually work. Nudge it to maybe there. Okay, get rid of those. Get rid of that one, too. Hmm. <laughs> ah, shite. If, okay, so if I put this in here... Did you to fit that? Yeah, oop, I just had it there. Okay, I can actually get it to tilt that way a little bit, and then if I can nudge it... Oh, wait a minute, though. I need it to... I need it to tilt the other way. Okay, get back in there. Now tilt this way. Of course, the save happens right there. Now lock that. Okay, that's good. Now nudge it back to here. That's probably about as good as I'm going to get that. It's just in a really weird position. Um... Yeah, let's just do that, I guess. <laughs> I mean, that's... That's... <laughs> that's probably not any better than it was in the first place. But it is what it is. We're going to go with it. Uh, this one was just a little too far out. So I, I made, like, this little concrete extension thingy here. Uh, to support it. But the ramp, the little ramp thing fit nicely under it, as did the... Well, that one's just a flat one over there anyway. Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to show that to you guys. Let's head back over and keep working on this. All right, guys, I had to come back um, to the factory here and get some more steel beams. And so let's check our hard drive stuff. Um, this is a pretty good copper recipe because it uses less ore and water for seven and a half more per minute. Let's click on this though. So we have, oh shit, we have a hundred, we have a hundred per minute in a foundry. That is, that's amazing. And I think I've actually used, I, in fact, I know I've used that one before. It's fairly expensive on the copper though, but I mean, you know, that's not that big of a deal. So, all right, this, I've, I've already got the stitched and the bolted plate, which is better than this. Um, I guess you would only use this if you had excess rubber, but the, the production rate's not that good. Because um, we, we can make 15 per minute with the bolted. And I've got a couple of really good screw recipes. 
and yeah and then these are the other ones so I, I'm not that was not really thrilling me either and I've already got the 60 per minute and I have a hundred per minute uh, steel ingot recipe so that one also is not really that attractive to me this one however this one's not necessarily a bad one just because well it does use quite a bit more copper um, but it would also be a way to use excess water but I also, I also have the wet concrete, which is a good way to get rid of excess water. I don't I don't know if we really need this, to be honest with you. Um, I might I might go ahead and take it just for the very fact that we could use it to get rid of excess water if we're at, you know if we're making aluminum, which I'm sure we're going to need to in a chain, and also need to make copper ingots. So I think we'll I think we'll take this. Let's do it. Okay. We'll scan the next drive. All right, so I'll see you guys back over, and we'll continue working on the train here. Okay, guys, uh, before we f continue working on the rail, uh, I actually want to get the train station in. And looks like we need a little bit of foliage removal here. Man, this is going to really take some trees down, but nothing for it. Okay. So that clears that up. Uh, there are two coal nodes uh, right over here, too. They're both normals. So there's one there and one there that we can tap into later, but this... These two will be plenty for now, and I even have them underclocked because we need a total of uh, 135 coal. So I have them both set to 75 a pop, which is 150. But I want I wanted to bring a little extra in just because when the train unloads, it actually pauses the flow of product. So to kind of help compensate for that, I'm just bringing in a little extra. Whether or not I actually need to do that, I'm not sure. But again, I'm I'm new to the whole train thing, so I'm just kind of trying to figure everything out. All right, I want to bring this to here. Uh, so we can use it as a marker. I don't have any power over here yet. The, those won't be powered until we bring the track around and connect it to the station. Uh, all right, so let's let's go ahead and put the train station in. And I'm gonna I'm gonna guess where I think I need it needs to go. Um, let's try it right there in that corner first. What's it looking like out here? Okay, yeah, that's fine. We won't name it till we have it positioned all the way. Okay, now let's grab a freight platform and flip it around. Okay, so it looks to me like we need to move the train station over that way one notch. So one notch this way. This way, right uh, there. Okay, uh, fleet, uh, freight, yeah, freight platform. Perfect. Okay. And then, you, uh, really? Is that? That's not actually going in there. <laughs> okay. Can I just 
Oh, yeah, I can just do this. Hold on. Oh, damn it. I'm pu no wonder that's not working. We got to put it. We got to bring it in here. That's right, because this is an input, not an output. Son of the bitch. Okay, so that means we need to. Um, we need to go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I think we need to line the front corner of that up to to there. Let's actually leave that in place for a minute. Damn it, I went one too far. Son of a bitch. Okay, train station. Whip around this way. platform put it around this way there we go huzzah okay fantastic this is a load which it's already set to and let's name it Loading. Yeah, we'll just call it coal loading. Um, if we make more of these for coal in the future, I'll have to be more specific about that. But uh, for now, well, that's what we'll name it. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Now we can finish getting the track over here. Let's get this toolbar here. Can I grab that from here? Yes, I can. Okay. We need to bring this around. Oh, you know what? I would have kind of liked that to have been in the center of the tile. Which means... We need to line up the rail on this end right there. Okay. That'll be easy to do. Alright, so train station, flip it this way. And line it up right here. Like that. That way when we take off you know, to go this way, we can stay right in the center of the rail. I, it's not that big of a deal, but it's the way I want to do it. So there you go. If you don't like it, sue me. Okay. Uh, no, we want a freight platform. Okay. I don't know if these will reach or not. Let's find out. 
Yes, they will. Beautiful. Let's just call coal loading station, because why the hell not? All right, and you're set to load. Okay, good. All right, so we want to bring this... Right there. Yeah, that works. Very nice. Okay, and then we have power. Why? There are no coal flowing on this bottom. Okay. I'm it probably has something to do with the way that I readjusted the lines, maybe. Okay, so um I need to go back up here and finish putting the supports in. So I'm going to do that next, and then uh, we'll we'll get started on the return line at the other side. Okay, guys, I got all the supports in place. Uh, for the rail coming down there, and it's looking pretty good. Now, coming out of here, we're going to have... We're basically going to be shooting right up. To that waterfall and then on through from there um and it's gonna be a pretty sharp turn going that way i already cleared some of those trees out but let's just see what it does here um if we Maybe bring the rail to there. See, that's aiming pretty close to where we want it to be. Now, what I might do here is... I'm going to lose power. Put this here on the global grid. And maybe put it like that. There another one? Guess not. Okay, so what I'm thinking here is that Hop up here and aim this up maybe that way. Yeah.
And then let's go with the two meter. And zoom that all the way up to there. One more and then we're gonna go straight through this river across the lake and up through that gap there Yeah, let's actually, no, I think I want this to be over more. That's about the right line there. I just want it to be over this way a little more. Oh, fuck. Damn it, Jim. It's as far over... <laughs> I keep hitting the wrong button. As far over that way as it's going to let me go... Well, actually, no. We put that there. Now we can slide it over even further. Okay, lock that. Don't unlock it. Straight up the river. We'll have to kind of curve a little bit to the right, but that's fine. Yeah, let's we'll keep this right here. decide if I want that to run right on the water or not. That might be kind of cool, actually. Yeah, let's do that. We'll just stay right skimming the surface of the water. And then, well... We'll pretty much stray, uh, stray, stay straight out over the lake till probably about there-ish. And then we're going to need to start thinking about curving at this point. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's see what the these ramps look like. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. Yeah, let's just get the rail this far and then we'll proceed after that. We'll take it to there. And here we want it to pretty much be straight on with this center of this foundation. That's not precisely straight but I think it's close enough to where it shouldn't be major or noticeable
Yeah, we're going to have a bit of a hump there, but I think that's probably okay. Okay, now we should be able to just go straight on down. Um... We still have a curve in it. But I don't like. Let's just take it take it out to here. Yeah, see, it makes, it kind of screws it up. You know what we could do, though, now that I think about it? Mm. I'm okay with that part. But it's just not perfectly straight. And I don't know how to if if I can make it that way. Let's go back over here. We've got to get this part to be perfectly straight when it gets up to here. But also in the center is the trick. It's not quite there. Not quite there. That's... Oh, damn, that's really close. But it's still not quite there. When we get to here... Still off a bit. That, okay, that's good right there. That's lined up perfect to that edge. Okay, that's where we needed to come to. Okay, now it should stay nice and straight. These things are really finicky, man. These rails. Can we get it? No, we can't quite get it all the way to there, but that's fine. We'll just redo this other one. Because, see, now if we eyeball down, it's it's perfectly straight. Looks, looks really good. Okay, let's pick this up. And then we basically want to move that over to probably there. And actually, yeah, we need to do this. I think we want it to be there. We might be able to I think we're going to hit this piece here. So we're going to have to...
going to have to raise that up a little more, which is going to cause a bump in the rail. Let's just see what it does. Uh, actually... That could be okay. If we just take it to there, I mean, there's a little bit of clipping there, but I can probably live with that. Because that still looks pretty good. All right. So, um, now... We need to let's get you out. That's not quite on the global grid, but that's okay. It doesn't really need to be for this. Because the rail's going to do what the rail's going to do. Um, yeah, we don't even need we don't even need to do that really. Um, but I would like <clears throat> would like this to shoot up a little bit higher than what it currently is. So what if I put you right about there, and then grab you, Let's go up to, let's go to there. Um, I think what we want to do now is aim for that gap right there, where my crosshair is. So th that means, let's get rid of those two. Pretty high up right here. Maybe come back down one. Put that on vertical and go down one. Okay. And then... I th that's that's aiming pretty close to the gap. Maybe move it even over this way one more. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Zoopity doop this. That tree is going to have to go. And we want to make sure, of course, that we're above our conveyor lines, which looks like we will be. Just barely. Um, well, we, we're probably going to need to start curving right about when we get to the miner anyway. Okay, let's bring the rail this far.
Okay, same thing. We want to get it in the center and in a straight line. So we're going to have to back up a little bit. That's not quite there. Not quite there. That's... I think that's it. Right there. Yeah, I believe that's it. We'll just run down. Yeah, that looks good, eyeballing it. Okay, let's nudge it this way. Um, and actually, before we finish that... I'm gonna run that to there. And we need to kind of wrap around and curve around that direction. So, why don't we pick this up? Actually, here. Oops. That's fine. Put this in vertical. Go down one. Let's go with that. Um, this might Oh shit. Yeah, th this is fine to here anyway and then I think we need to turn it again Yeah, I think we need to get a little steeper here. So let's make this a a, a four meter ramp. And then Right. Then we should be able to use the two meters. I think, though, what we'll do is... Maybe cut it back to here. All right, let's try that. See what happens.
Okay, so we need to make sure that that stays on this side of the miner. Oh, you know what, though? The train could run into those things, huh? I mean, it wouldn't actually, but in reality, it could. So we need to cut this even sharper. We don't want to get it too close to the side of the cliff, though, either, so... How about... there. Hmm. That's no bueno. Shit. Okay, so what that means then is we need to we need to come out wider over here than we did. So I'm going to do this. And instead of centering the rail on the tile, we'll center it on the seam. We'll see what that looks like. And this also doesn't need to be as tight either. So we'll bring it around this way. And we're not going to be able to get it to line up perfectly. So let's just go with that and see what... You know, actually, something just occurred to me. Oh, no, it's too short. I wish there was like a little trick for making it go straight. What if I did this? What if I started a section here and then did that? Ah, that worked. Okay. That worked quite well, in fact. I'm learning. I'm getting better. See, that's nice and straight. I mean, it, you can tell if you're, if you're really eyeball it, you can tell there's just a little bit of jank in that little section, but... It made the rest of the rail look good, though, so that's the important thing. All right, now... Um, let's start bringing that over that way. And we have plenty of clearance now for the train coming through here. And, ooh, that's tight. That's really tight, but I think it's okay. I mean, just barely. As long as it doesn't try and put its brakes up. Um, which it actually probably will start to try and brake right about here. I wonder if we should not have that quite so tight. Yeah, let's not have that quite so tight. 
I mean, I want it to start moving that direction, but... Let's try that. Oh. No. That was cutting tighter than I thought it was. Yeah, no, that's not gonna work. Okay, try it again. I think we really just need to keep this right kind of in between those two little knobs there and maybe even just back and then we'll start the curve after that just for clearance here yeah that, that that's gonna be okay uh, I'm just looking at you know this little knob right there okay so now we're gonna have to turn pretty tightly here. Um, okay, what the hell is it doing? Can't tell. Yeah, let's not bring it down that far. <clears throat> let's bring it to here. Okay, that looks fine. Oh good, I got the power from over there. like it to have it down a little sooner so the way to really do that I think is gonna be to make this steeper lock that in place for a second yeah that's probably okay if we just do that yeah I don't like how it embeds in the concrete so what we want to do then is bring it to here like that. I have an idea though. If we bring this a little wider. Try that. That 
That'll probably be okay. I just don't... I don't like the little bump here, though, is the thing, but... I'm not sure how to deal with... Okay, I got another idea. Let's do this. Let's run the rail off of here. Straight... Nope. Straight to... Well, right there is fine. Okay. Now, what will it, what will it do if we run it right into... Oh, it's not going to go high enough, far enough, is it? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if we can avoid the, the little bump thing it's going to do. Okay, this needs to come out a little wider just from eyeballing it. Let's bring it to there. That's not bad, actually. That's not bad. I mean, yeah, that's actually pretty good. There is still a little bit of a bump thing here, but it's not as noticeable as it was before. Cool. <clears throat> um. All right, so what I'm going to do is go back, pick up all the concrete, put in the supports, and when I'm finished with that, we'll come back, we'll set a train down, and we'll take a train ride. That ought to be fun. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, I'm back, and uh, we are ready for the final step in this uh, train building process, and that's the train itself. Uh, so I took a little bit of time and did some decorating around uh, the station. As you can see here, put some decals down, did a little bit of coloring, changed some of it to asphalt. Um, oh, that looks kind of weird. Um, if I set this to there, okay, yeah, let's do that too, so it, uh, colors the sides of those. Uh, I put some ports down here, as you can see, ran rails, and then I went to the other station and did something similar, but I ran out of, I ran out of rails. Oh, shit. Um, and I actually need some rails. Here, let's hit that. One and that one too. I actually need some rails for um, some stairs down that way too. So I'm going to actually run over really quick and grab some of those. In fact, I think I'll just grab some out of these boxes over here. So uh, I, I very briefly mentioned at the beginning of... This, uh, well, actually, this is probably going to be a two-part episode at least. <laughs> it took a long time. Um, but anyways, I mentioned at the start of all this that because we don't have a lot of time left on this save, we were going to do kind of more of a fun roller coaster build. Uh, if this was going to be a more permanent save, I would have done something different. Um, what I basically would have done is I would have run the road over there. And we still might do that if we have time and, you know, because we're going to need to, be, need to bring more resources in. But I would have started here and run the road that way and then cut it up north and then run the rails along the road so it was more, oh, I don't know, more business-like, I suppose. But uh, this is fun, too, so we're just going to do it this way. Okay, so let's go ahead and get ourselves a train. We uh, One locomotive should be just fine for, for what we're doing here. And we want to turn it that way. And let's also uh, get a freight car, which is here. And we'll attach that. Okay, and then we'll hop in the train. Press the Q menu. Uh, we're going to call this the coal train because that's what it is. 
Uh, we'll go to edit timetable. We'll add the west coal drop and the coal loading station. We're going to go to this little cog here and we're going to set this to zero because there's no point in it waiting longer than it, get, it does one load and unload and then it goes. And you can do things in here like you can specify what you want it to add or uh, load or just unload only. So it's sort of kind of like a smart splitter uh, in that respect. Uh, your option here is one load, unload has been completed or wait until the whole entire thing is loaded. Um... So I guess that seems to suggest that one one load doesn't fill the whole thing. I don't know. I'm not really sure. But that's the default setting. We'll just leave it on there. And um, we'll click Save. And then we'll do the same thing here. We'll just set this to zero at the coal station. Click Save. Uh, okay, so we got our two stations in and... Save those changes, and here we go. What am I missing? Next station is <clears throat> turn off self-driving. Do I have to pop out of it? Probably something really stupid that I'm missing here. Um, I can't, it, it's not moving. I can't, I mean, I can't even drive it myself. What the hell? Dude, you're killing me, man. Okay, let's, um, let's put this on. You are set to unload, right? Yeah, okay. It, I mean, it says break, but I'm pressing spacebar to turn the brake off. I don't know. It seems like it's bugged. Let's try it again. Maybe move it back. Let's move it back over here. Oh, I went around and textured all of the little platforms with asphalt and then put the yellow caution stripey th things on there. Thought that looked kind of cool. Okay, this one's working. That was really weird. Okay. Let's actually move it out of this station. Oh, I wonder if it has... I wonder if it had to do with the order that I did it. Oh, maybe that was it. Okay, here, let's do this then. Let's go back here. Okay. Let's add a freight car. One freight car I think will be f plenty for this, um, as well as one locomotive. Can I still drive? Yes, I can. Okay. So... We'll go back in here and we'll call this coal train. Um, stop, please. Okay. Edit timetable. Start west coal drop and then coal loading station. Uh, save changes. Okay, self-driving still not on. Why are you moving? Knock it off. I wonder if it was because the back car was still on a little bit of an incline so it was pushing it back okay go here set this to zero and this to zero save changes turn on self-driving here we go okay let's go for a train ride guys this is gonna be awesome so it'll actually stop here but because there's nothing to unload, it should just move right on out and not wait that 15 seconds. Yep, as soon as it honks, I didn't do that by the way. As soon as it does the horn, that means it's heading out. All right, look, look at this. This is freaking awesome, man. Okay, let's turn all the HUD off. 
Here we go. Woo! I can't really zoom out very far. I love this. This is so awesome. The sounds, too, that they make. I mean, you know, you've got a good set of headphones on. Sounds very cool. Very realistic. I wish you could zoom out a little further. All right, here we go. I'm curious to see how much coal it's actually going to pick up. Like, is it going to... That thing's completely full because it's been, you know, doing its thing this whole time. We need to get some lights out here. Our very first load of resources on the train. Amazing. Okay, here we go. That's tight. <laughs> he put his brakes up right after he went through there. Okay. Curious, like I said, did it did it give us the full car or, or it should have. If it didn't, then we would need to use that other setting. Set, you know, the one that says, wait till you're fully loaded. But that might have something to do with loading multiple cars, would be my guess. Okay. Off you go. That is so cool. All right, let's see what we got in here. All right, so I, I think that's... That might be the maximum load that the boxcar itself can handle. That'd be my guess. Okay, guys. Wow. This took me a long time to do. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, it took a long time, dude. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, just working with these tracks, they're just, they're just kind of weird. But I think overall, you know, being as how I'm pretty new to all this, I think it looks pretty good, you know. Um, I did the best that I knew how to do to keep the tracks, you know, nice and straight and looking good as best as we could. And I, you know, e even this this whole little dip coming down here, just tweaking with it a few times, improved it significantly from the first pass that we did of it. it doesn't look too bad, if you don't mind my saying so. It looks pretty damn good. Okay, so anyway, for the next episode, the plan's going to be to put that thing together. Um, oh, that is so cool how the, the green lights shine down on the bottom of the ocean there. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. Um, yeah, so we'll get started in the next episode with putting together our automated wiring section of our factory. And I have blueprints for all of that stuff. So this whole director assembly, um, adaptive control units, the, you know, uh, the, these are, this is the automated wiring for the adaptive control units. And then we have four other products too, that we'll have to do. Um, and I've, I've already put these together and tested them and I had to tweak a couple things, but they seem to work pretty good. So that is coming up in the next episode, putting this together and it should be a lot of fun and we will be on our way to joining the big leagues in this game. The
by far the biggest project we've ever done a few times over. <laughs> so it'll be fun, but that's that's the nature of this game. And, you know, I'd, I'm up for the challenge, but boy, does it take a lot of work. So with that being said, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch y'all in the next episode. Bye-bye.